Okay, enough. The disrespect towards the EuroLeague MVPs have to stop. I've seen too many YouTube videos like this one. Yes, Sasha Vizenkov might not be playing as much as some expected, but Vasilya Mitic's case is proving one thing. The veteran rookies from Europe simply need time and the right environment to show off their full potential. The Serbian just dropped his career-high 25 points, so let's see how one trade from OKC to Charlotte has drastically changed the way you should look at EuroLeague MVPs in the NBA. Get the turnover back. And Mitic lobs, it's finished by Richards. What took him so long to get to the NBA? Last summer, both Mitic and Vizenkov, two former EuroLeague MVPs, both signed in the NBA and the internet went buzzing. With the number of international players increasing each season and them dominating the league, people expected a lot. And I get that, Mitic and Vizenkov were both dominating in Europe. On top of the MVP trophy in 2021, Mitic was a back-to-back -back champion bagging back-to-back -back Final Four MVPs in those runs too. He was also the top scorer in the EuroLeague with 18.2 points per game. Vizenkov, on the other hand, won the MVP and almost the title too last year with Olympiakos, stunning Europe with his unique style of play. Forver barely used the dribble, spinning the heads of his defenders with his incredible off-ball movement. We even had a video on our channel about how he scored 275 points with only 26 dribbles. Got it! But NBA is a different game and European MVPs almost never get their respect immediately. Achievements in Europe rarely do mean anything for NBA coaches or front office members. They understand there are enormous differences in the two basketballs played. As a result, Vazenkov is averaging less than 13 minutes per game for Sacramento, where Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray and even Trey Lyles jam the forward spot and take most of the minutes. Vasilya found himself in an even worse situation in Oklahoma. Shea Gilgis Alexander is one of the best players in the entire league, Josh Giddy is the clear first point guard there, and the franchise used its first round pick last summer on Kaysen Wallace, another young and promising guard. Vasilius' minutes were limited to 12 per game in those mere 30 games he played. He had 20 instances where he rode the bench for the entire 48 minutes, definitely not making his adjustment period smoother. And when we are talking about adjustments, there are a bunch of those. From larger court to different rules to much more athletic players. I honestly have a hard time remembering a European veteran coming over, taking the starting spot from someone and dominating right from the get-go. Except of course if you're Luka Doncic, but that's a different story. However, averaging only 10 minutes per game and playing in every two does not mean EuroLeague MVPs suck. And Mitic trade from OKC to Charlotte is a prime example of it. Okay, he went from a title contender to the worst team in the league, if we're judging by the net rating. But with LaMelo Ball sideline, he immediately got a chance. And that's all Vasilya Mitic needed. In his first game against Memphis, he spent 26 minutes on the court, more than in any of the 50 matches with OKC jersey. 18 points and 9 assists was the outcome of that. Did he learn how to play in one day? Absolutely not. It's all about the opportunity. After 14 games with Charlotte, Vasa is averaging 25 minutes minutes per game, more than double than in OKC, as he scores 10.4 points per game and adds 5.9 assists. These are solid numbers, don't you agree? The Hornets also started celebrating wins more often, bagging 7 in 15 games. Before the trade deadline, they have won only 10 out of 51. Now I'm not saying it is related only to Micic, absolutely not, but he acted a huge part. Micic! Oh, oh my goodness! goodness. This begs a question. Do European rookie veterans need to start their careers from bottom of the standings NBA franchises where immediate playing time is guaranteed? This way they have chances to adjust, plus they can earn their respect overseas by showing what they're capable of. Simone Fontecchio is another example of this hypothesis. Since the trade from Utah to Detroit, the Italian has been inserted into a starting lineup and has instantly delivered. Paul Wing is averaging 15.3 points 
points per game on 55% shooting from two and 43% shooting from long distance. Nonetheless, he has the best plus minus of the entire team. Of course, Utah isn't a winning organization at the moment too, but they prioritize the growth of other guys in Fontecchio's position, for example, Okai Agbaje last season. Fontecchio around Harden for the flush. It's 10 points in nine minutes for Fontecchio in his first game with the Pistons. But let's go back to Misic. What he has shown in Charlotte. Has he demonstrated enough in a bottom team for some contender to give him a rotation spot later? But before we look into it, please subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to all the content we will upload and you will also have a chance to win Yanis jersey. We are giving it away once we hit 150k subs, so subscribe now and don't miss out. So Vasilya Misic is a modern day point guard, tall and skilled. European fans had him and Facunda Campazzo among the best point guards in the EuroLeague a couple of seasons ago and both went to the NBA. However, the Argentinian struggled because of his height and lack of shooting from deep. Mitic is way taller and that often allows him to get into the paint and finish there. Standing at 1 meter and 96 or 6 foot 5, the Serbian is one of the shiftiest players in the league. He's not as fast as Campazzo, but look at him splitting two defenders here with a smooth change of direction. NBA fans might not know this, but he was a four-time skiing champion in his native Serbia when growing up. And that helps him hugely on a basketball court. Watch him barely lose speed on a between-the-legs dribble, getting advantage and laying it in over the weak side help. Despite not possessing above-average vertical ability, Mitic is able to convert on drives to the rim. He has made 60% of his shots 10 feet around the rim. And there is one tactical move from the Hornets coach Steve Clifford that is helping Vasilya to get Mitic more quality shots around the rim. Knowing Mitic isn't of the fastest guys, they are using fundamentals or in this case a slip screen to create the advantage. Watch Davis Bertens or others run past Mitic, setting a ghost screen, confusing the opponents and opening up driving gaps for Vasilya. Also, in this clip, I love how inside the paint he slows down on the 1 2 step, letting the more athletic center fly by. That pure skill and scoring ability is what gave Mitic the opportunity to win the EuroLeague MVP. Mitic, savvy move. He has a floater, he can knock down a jumper after dribble, whether it's against a passive drop pick and roll coverage or against a late switch situation here versus Philly. Offensively, he has a lot to offer even in the NBA. Of course, I'm not putting him in the top tier, but he has a solid package that many contending teams could use from the bench making a strong play of push. The only thing that's missing from Vasilia in Charlotte is his three-point shooting. He is at an abysmal 25% from behind the arc. Could it be the longer three-point line? Now, it might have an effect, but it's honestly weird. He was used to long-distance shots even in the EuroLeague. In the last five seasons with FS, he never went below 35%, despite firing away many difficult off-the-dribble threes, attempting over six per game. In Europe, if a team went under the ball screen with Mitic, I would have called him crazy. Here, NBA teams are starting to do so, limiting his abilities to create for others. But on March 13, we saw a first good sign. He dropped 5 out of 6, punishing teams for going under. If Mitic can revert back to his averages in Europe from the 3 point range, and we see he's getting plenty of good looks, not only it would boost his averages, but also open up Charlotte's offense. Shot again. Mitic adds to his career high night. Despite teams started going under, Mitic has been a solid facilitator, dishing out almost 6 dimes per game for the Hornets. Center Nick Richards has been the main guy taking benefits. His scoring jumped from 9.5 to 11.5 after the Serbian point guard joined the team. Mitic has been great finding the rolling bigs as well as others who move without the ball as he attacks. He is an unselfish playmaker that can attract defenders because of his scoring ability and I believe we are about to see even more of it. Mitic! A spin to the rim for two. The big question remains whether he can defend good enough for coaches to keep him on the floor in a contending team. But meanwhile, I hope this slander for yearly MVPs stops. Jumping to the NBA is a big change for anyone and even older Europeans need their time to adjust and earn their respect. Let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about Mitic's and Vezenkov's rookie seasons in the NBA. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to our channel and I'll see you in the next one.